Versus performance and the numbers are now trickling in. The dollar revenue that stands at $3,782 million. The large deal momentum has been strong at $2.6 billion, that is, on TCV. The revenue guidance for FY22 has been revised to 14 to 16%. Margin guidance has been retained at 22 to 24%. And I think this is the key number that the market is going to be absorbing. I just want to quickly tell you uh, what is it that we were anticipating in terms of uh the FY22 revenue guidance because the street was working with a range of about 13 to 15 odd percent. So the revenue guidance which has been now revised uh, and uh, you know uh, been set at 14 to 16 percent is definitely higher than what the street was anticipating and I guess that also uh, is part of the reason why you had Infosys go strong into its numbers. Remember the stock held out by a solid two and a quarter percent on close today. Uh, much of the excitement was also because of mine trees and numbers and that sort of rubbed off on the rest of the IT majors. Margin guidance, that's been retained at 22 to 24 percent. So just going by the guidance pictures, it's look, it looks like a strong set. Some of the other operational numbers coming in, 4.8 percent on a sequential basis. That's the constant currency revenue growth. The revenue stands in rupees terms at 27,896 crores. Uh, PAD has come in at 5,195 crore rupees. The operating margins of 23.7 percent. Uh, Revenue growth of 4.8 percent on a sequential basis in constant currency terms, and 16.9 percent um, on a year-on-year -year basis in constant currency terms. Uh, the digital revenues they are at 53.9 percent of the total revenues. Just the first take, the numbers look a little ahead of what the street was penciling in. But let me take it across to my colleague Poonam Sani. She's been tracking the numbers far closely. Poonam, uh, what is the scorecard looking like for Infi? There's certainly a beat on the revenue front, uh, Aisha. You're seeing a quarter and quarter uh, uh, revenue growth in constant currency terms at 4.8% on a sequential basis and 16.9% uh, YOY uh, is definitely ahead of what we were working with. Do you recall, Aisha, we were working with a number of 3.9% uh, quarter on quarter, and this is a fairly, fairly strong growth. Of course, on the EBIT margin front, it's below our estimates. Uh, we were expecting a bit margin of 24.4% and margins have come in at 23.7% uh, during the quarter. Also, uh, large deal signings are seen close to around $2.6 billion, which is uh, fairly good enough. And even if I'm looking at across uh, the verticals, uh, vertical growth across the board um, has been fairly strong. For instance, financial services, uh, retail, both these segments have grown at the rate of 22% by a in constant currency terms, facing a strong growth in the energy vertical, in manufacturing vertical, which has grown at 18.5% by a in constant currency. Life science is growing at 21% uh, in constant currency. High tech growing at 15% in constant currency. So it's definitely a broad based growth across the verticals. It's only the communication segment, which has grown in low single digits of 4.6%. Even in terms of the geographies, very strong growth coming in from North America at 21%. Europe has grown strongly at 12% uh, during the quarter. And also, we are seeing uh, India growth coming fairly strong at 20.7%. I guess the margin guidance has been retained at 22%. Uh, to 24% for Infosys, but otherwise it's uh, it's a fairly fairly strong number, and uh, uh, some of the uh, the commentary also is coming fairly strong, which is uh, Mr. Sully Parikh stating that we grew at the fastest pace in Q1 in a in in a decade, and which is fairly which is a fairly strong commentary. Uh, besides that. To recall, quite a lot of the analysts were expecting in revenue uh, guidance to be uh, to be upped. Uh, and some of the analysts were expecting the guidance to be up to 13 to 15 percent, but the guidance has been up to 14 to 16 percent. So this is a fairly, fairly strong guidance upgrade coming in uh, from Infosys. So I would say a fairly strong quarter uh, this time coming in from Infosys, broad-based growth, FY22, revenue guidance uh, upgraded. And uh, yes, attrition has picked up to 13.9 percent. Across the industry, we're seeing attrition picking up. So we will have to watch out for 
what is the margin commentary because the margins have dipped substantially right uh, than what we were Poonam, expecting. Stay with us. I'm, I'm going to come to you in a second from now. We've got our experts as well joining in. So let's quickly take it across to them. Uh, we've also got the management commentary and quotations too coming in. But before anything else, uh, Omkar, Sudeep, uh, Sandeep, uh, all of you, thanks for taking the time out and joining in. Omkar, if I could begin the discussion with you. Uh, the guidance definitely is a little higher than what the market was anticipating. Good numbers, you would say, a thumbs up from your end? Yes, definitely we can say a beat in terms of revenue, but uh, there isn't uh, decline marginally in terms of uh, operating margin. But in revenue terms, definitely we were expecting around 4.4% uh, uh, of the revenue growth, which came at 4.8% on quarter on quarter basis, which was a major surprise. Even DE wins came uh, decently at 2.6 billion. And uh, the, uh, the most uh, exciting thing was uh, the... Uh, they have revised this guidance upwards to 14 to 16 percent, uh, which which is again a positive, big positive uh, news from the uh, in the uh, in the side. So uh, which which uh, gives them uh, visibility going ahead. So it's definitely a positive sign uh, for uh, as companies for all these results perspective. Sure. Before I take it across to Sudhir, uh, Sudhir as well as Sandeep, I'm going to quickly read out what the commentary from the management is like because that has also got a very bullish undertone. Uh, employee well-being is of paramount importance to us and we have had multiple interventions in this regard including facilitated vaccinations for them and their dependents. We rolled out several intense employee engagement initiatives including uh, career acceleration opportunities, compensation reviews and learning and redevelopment interventions. Our clients continue to be supportive of the multiple initiatives that we have undertaken the value uh, they value the delivery commitments we have met during these extraordinary times that's the word coming in from Praveen Rao the COO at Infosys um, also he says that as the demand for digital talent explodes rising attrition in the industry poses a uh, poses a near-term challenge. He says we plan to meet this demand by expanding a hiring program of college graduates for FI 22 to 35,000 roughly globally. That's the addition coming in from him. Another word coming in from Salil Parik, the CEO at MD, saying driven by the dedication of our employees and the trust of our clients, we grew at the fastest pace in first quarter in a decade at 16.9% on a year-on-year -year basis and 4.8% on a sequential basis in constant currency. I'm proud of our employees, Salil Pari goes on to say, who as one enforces demonstrate resilience and commitment in delivering for our clients. He says this gives us confidence to increase our revenue growth guidance to 14 to 16 percent. That's the word coming in. He also says as enforces completes 40 remarkable years, its continuing success and global impact are a testament of the vision of the founders and all the leaders who have shaped the company. So bullish management coming in saying that it's been a record fastest pace of growth that they have uh, incurred in the first quarter and the visibility going forward as well remains strong. It's only the CEO Praveen Rao indicating that attrition may actually pose a challenge uh, considering its uh, digital talent that they are focused on towards right now. But Sadhi, what are you making of the numbers right now? What's the first take? Definitely revenue is uh, uh, slightly ahead of our expectations uh, at 4.8% constant currency growth in sequential terms. Uh, this is uh, almost 40-50 basis points ahead of our expectations. Uh, margins were tad lower, uh, roughly around 1900 basis points lower than our expectations. And in terms of uh, uh, guidance increase, uh, we were expecting a more gradual revision to guidance. Uh, probably from 12 to 14% earlier, we were expecting that to come to at least 13 to 15% sort of a number. Uh, but there uh, was a pleasant surprise uh, uh, as in there are a couple of percentage points uh, of a uh, step up in terms of uh, uh, revenue growth guidance. Uh, margin guidance, we were anyways not expecting margin uh, uh, the company to uh, uh, step up the margin guidance. So it's kind of uh, in line with the expectations. And in terms of the large deal momentum, uh, I think $2.5 billion uh, more or less in line with uh, 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 in line with uh, the company's trends uh, uh, over the previous several quarters. If you look at average trends for the previous several quarters, of course, we'll have to uh, listen from the management as to how the uh, split of renewals and new in this $2.6 billion will stack up. Uh, so overall, uh, I would say uh, uh, this uh, uh, good result uh, uh, despite uh, some sort of a miss on the uh, margin front.
Okay, meantime, uh, uh, Praveen, let, uh, pardon me, Omkar, let's get in a view as to how you're looking at uh, the overall operating margin guidance as well. That's been retained at 22 to 24%. And how are you reading into the large deal momentum, $2.6 billion in TCV? The large deal swings uh, that came uh, are much in line with our expectations. I mean, uh, they are fairly decent. They have uh, uh, won, uh, the, the, uh, won the previous large deal swing in previous quarter exactly at the same rate. So it is a fairly going enough. And uh, uh, on the margin front, the way that we factored the overall margin performance in in uh, in overall all the sectors. I mean, all the companies those are on IT. Uh, so uh, apart from that, there is a transition cost that is involved. Uh, so that has also impacted the margin a bit. So uh, and and we see, I mean, uh, the, the the rising cost may impact of going ahead because they have retained the guidance uh, for for uh, 22 to 24 percent uh, going ahead. So uh, we we can yeah, say and there might be some impact in terms of margin uh, going ahead. But I believe uh, the 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 higher volume growth may uh, offset some of the uh, operating expenses uh, by 22. Um, does the guidance, uh, the revenue growth guidance being revised to 14 to 16 percent in cross currency terms versus the 12 to 14 percent earlier give some amount of added confidence? Sandeep, that question was for you. Okay, we seem to have disconnected that line, but uh, Umkar, uh, let me get in your uh, view as to how you're looking at the overall guidance instilling confidence, the fact that it's been raised. Yes, it's definitely given in uh, 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 higher visibility uh, in, in terms of revenue growth and the growth that they are going to achieve and the ramping up the uh, deals that they have won in the previous quarters. It's definitely a, a building up uh, help in building a confidence uh, in, in terms of uh, overall uh, scenario. Anjan Roy, the Chief Financial Officer as well, saying that they remain confident of delivering margin guidance, cost optimization program to negate increasing cost headwinds, which are arising from the compensation review, talent acquisition and retention. So that is the company talking uh, uh, about how they're confident about retaining their overall margin guidance. Reconnected then with Sandeep Agarwal. Sandeep, I was asking about uh, the kind of confidence that it instills, the fact that the company has retained the FY22 operating margin guidance at 22 to 24 percent and the revenue guidance being revised higher to 14 to 16 percent versus 12 to 14 percent in cross currency terms. I think he's uh, not really connected with us still. Sudhir, so uh, let's get in your take as to how you're looking at these two parameters. Yeah, uh, so in terms of the margin guidance, as I highlighted earlier, I, uh, you know, neither as well nor I believe the consensus is actually expecting a step up in terms of the margin guidance. So that retention of 22 to 24 percent guidance, I would say, is the kind of base case expectation for the street any which way. So there is not much of a surprise or disappointment factor over there. Now coming to the revenue growth guidance, uh, you know, while the management has guided for 12 to 14 percent sort of constant currency growth, uh, in the previous quarter while they have guided for this sort of a growth for the full year, 
uh, state is still building in 16-17% sort of a growth. So kind of consensus is ahead of the guidance in terms of uh, building revenue expectations for FY22. So from that standpoint, I would say uh, not upgrading the guidance would have been a negative rather than reading, uh, you know, the upgrade as positive. Having said that, uh, we were expecting a more gradual step up in the revenue growth guidance. Probably we were expecting a one percentage point step up in the revenue growth guidance in this quarter, followed by another one percentage point sort of a step up in the guidance in the subsequent quarter. So what surprised us is uh, the two step, two percentage points step up in the percent, uh, in the guidance rather than one percentage point step up in the guidance. The only correlation that I can draw with INFI as well as TCS is that their employee cost has been rising and attrition continues to be a concern. If I can just read out uh, the comment coming in from Praveen Rao, the Chief Operating Officer, once again, he says, as the demand for digital talent explodes, rising attrition in the industry does pose a near-term challenge. He says, we plan to meet this demand by expanding our hiring program of college graduates for FI22 to around 35. 5,000 globally as a headcount, he adds. Um, so we just wanted your sense on, you know, what is it that you're making of the salary costs and whether that's a looming thread for most large cap IT players, as was the case with TCS, seems to be the same problem with Infi as well. Uh, I would read this more of as a transient problem because uh, what one should note is the fact that uh, pressure hiring or campus hiring used to be a significant part of the overall hiring needs of these companies, right? But last year and this year, the uh, you know possibility of going for a pressure hiring and then training them physically in a location, uh, that prospect of that was dented because of the uh, lockdown situation we are in. Uh, so the pressure hiring slash campus hiring program has kind of taken a pause or it was not to the extent that it used to be in a typical year earlier. Because of this, what's happening is most of the companies are kind of scouting for talent, which is in the lateral end. So most of the companies are kind of scouting for lateral talent, which is why there is a near-term impact in terms of uh, in terms of the availability of the lateral talent. But I would read this as a short-term or a transient phenomena. I would not read too much into it. Uh, I would say uh, you know large companies like TCS and Infosys, which have very strong. Uh, human resources supply chains, which have built very strong human resources supply chains over a period of time, uh, should not find it very difficult to source talent going ahead. Uh, I would read it more as a transient, let's say, two to three quarters sort of a supply side uh, uh, issue or supply side bottleneck rather than a long term structural problem here. I think we have Sandeep uh, back on the phone line with us. Sandeep, you know, it's a given that Infi has done what TCS couldn't as compared to a muted quarter from TCS. It's been a beat in terms of revenue and the guidance as well, trajectory has been moved upwards. That said, in terms of the valuation metrics, uh, TCS is expensive both on an FI22 and FI23 estimated basis. But Infi on a one-month basis has already moved up roughly about 6.5% and year-to-date it's up 22.5%. Add to that the cheer in the stock today as well. Part of it, I guess, was also to do with uh, Mindtree's numbers uh, rubbing off on the rest of the IT pack. But do you believe that these uh, numbers for the previous quarter merit any sort of change in your price targets or recommendations on Infi? So, you know, my price target is 2200 for a long time. So, I don't know the management. And vaccination protocols followed. All our participants have been fully vaccinated. And we are coming to you.